Hello everyone, this is Girish Gaudani, and today we are going to discuss about NCERT Class Seven Geography Chapter Three, that is our changing Earth. So as we go through about how our Earth changes, we need to know about the lithosphere and its plates. So yes, the lithosphere is broken into a number of plates, which is called as lithospheric plates. And this lithospheric plates are actually several large and some small rigid irregularly shaped plates which carry the continents and the ocean flow. And you know these plates keeps moving around slowly almost a few millimeter each year. Yes, it keeps moving almost a few millimeter each year. Then why do these plates move? These plates actually moves due to the circular movement of molten magma inside the earth and the movement of these plates causes the changes on the surface of the earth. Then after that you can see that the earth movements are actually divided into two that is endogenic force and exogenic force. Endogenic forces are the sudden forces and the dash trophic forces. There are two types of endogenic forces, sudden forces and the dash trophic forces. So, when we talk about the sudden forces, also known as catastrophic force, which is further classified as the earthquake, volcano, or landslides. Okay. When we talk about the dash trophic force, which is the actually the slow movement kind of force, which is a kind of continuous work, which could be given as example as building of mountains. Now, the next one work comes the exogenic force. Now this exogenic force actually does two kinds of work, either erosional or depositional. When we talk about the erosional work and the depositional work, these are actually done by the four agents that is river, wind, sea waves and glaciers. Okay? So moving with the endogenic forces in much details, so as we discussed there are two types of forces. Uh, and these forces are actually the, the endogenic forces act in the interior of the earth whereas the exogenic forces act on the surface of the earth it, it's quite or, uh, clear with the name itself now as we see the cross section of the volcano we can see the cloud of the volcanic ash and the volcanic box we must have seen in the movies and somewhere in the pictures so let's discuss about what is the volcano and how does it work so you can see the magma chamber that is inside the volcano and from this magma chamber the magma flows out through the towards the vent and then the cloud of volcanic ash is actually formed okay now moving further with the earthquakes, the next work that is earthquakes, when the lithospheric plates move, the surface of the earth vibrates and this is called the earthquakes. Place in the crust where the movement starts is known as focus. As you can see in the diagram as well, I will show you the diagram. So place in the crust where the movement starts is known as focus. And after that, the place on the surface of the earth where, which is actually just above the focus, which is known as epicenter. And you know the greatest damage is usually closest to the epicenter and the least damage is always farthest to the epicenter as we move away so the damage becomes least okay it gets lesser and lesser moving ahead with the diagram of the volcano you can see it here epicenter the fault and the focus I hope it's quite clear with this diagram now moving to, you know, this is actually, this earthquake is measured through the seismograph. The intensity of an earthquake is measured through the seismograph. There's a frame, there's a base, there's a ground movement, there's a fixed mass, okay? Which actually tells us how much the uh, intensity of an earthquake is. Now, let me tell you something that's really very important the types of earthquake waves so there are three types of earthquake waves p waves s waves and l waves p waves are the longitudinal waves s waves are the transversal waves and l waves are the surface waves because of their work they are named so so 
after we coming we come to know about this much things about the earthquake we need to actually find out we are so worried that what if an earthquake comes so when the earthquake comes why what we need to prepare we actually need to find out a safe spot now safe spot like what safe spot could be under the kitchen counter it could be under the table it could be under the desk it could be against an inside corner wall etc now second thing comes stay away from now you need to remember from which things you need to stay away from so these are the fireplaces and the chimneys the windows including mirrors the picture frames etc because this all things could hurt you during the earthquake now the third thing comes be prepared yes be prepared and aware your friends and the family members to face this disaster very confidently now let me tell you something about the exogenic forces so when we talk about the exogenic forces the landscape is actually continuously worn away by two processes one is weathering second is erosion weathering is breaking up of the rocks on the earth surface whereas when we talk about the erosion it is the wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water ice and wind these are the different agents which wears away the landscape and that's known as erosion so the we will be talking about the very first thing that is the bulk of the river in the diagram you can see the river system which means the sources from which the river originates then the trib uh, tributaries the confluence the meanders the oxbow lakes the rivers the levees the deltas the channels the estuaries the mouth etc then moving further to the bulk of the river let's discuss all the things in very detail no need to worry we will discuss all these things in a very detail so moving away with the work of a river the running water in the river actually erodes away the landscape and let's discuss about the very first and foremost work of the river that is the waterfall so as the river tumbles at a steep angle over very hard rocks or down a steep valleyside it forms the waterfall and next work you must have seen meander have you ever heard what is meander meander is actually formed when the river enters the plains it actually twists and turns forming the large bends and these large bends are known as meanders then comes the oxbow lake and what is this oxbow lake this oxbow lake is actually formed due to the continuous erosion and deposition of the meander loop which actually cuts off from the river and this cuts off from as it cuts off from the river it forms a kind of cut off lake so that's why the oxbow lake is also known as a cut off lake okay and it is known as lake because it consists of the fresh water now next coming with from the oxbow lake we are coming to the flood plains now flood plains are flat fertile land area then moving with the levees levees are the raised river banks okay when the river banks have many layers it gets risen up and that's known as levees as the river approaches the sea the speed of water decreases and river begins to break up into a number of streams and these streams are known as distributaries each distributary forms its own mouth and moving further with the last thing that is delta so delta is the collection of sediments from all the mouths delta is only formed when the collection is there of sediments from the all the mouths of the river that forms the delta and after this we need to move move with the work of sea waves so as you can see in the diagram these are the works of sea waves this we can see the stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and further last one is stage 4 so we'll discuss all these things in detail so just moving with the first one So sea caves. When the waves continuously strike at the rocks, the crack, a uh, kind of crack develops, and these hollow-like caves are formed on the rocks, which is known as sea caves. Then comes the sea arch. Now, what is the sea arch? When the cavities become bigger and bigger, and only the roof of the caves remain, the rest behind one wall gets away. That gets broken. Only the roof of the Case remains, 
and such a structure is known as C arch. Then moving with the C stacks. Now what are the C stacks? C stacks are there when the erosion breaks the roof also, and only walls are left. Okay. Now then comes the C cliff. C cliff is the last one when the steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above the sea water. Then it is known as C cliff. And the last work is beaches. It is a kind of depositional work. Waves deposit sediments along the shores, and these sediments which are deposited along the shores forms the beaches. Okay. After that we are moving to the work of ice. Or I should say the work of glaciers. So the very first and foremost question comes: What do you mean by glaciers? Or what is glacier? So glaciers are the rivers of ice. Yes, they are the rivers of ice in simple words. So glaciers carve out deep hollows. As the ice melts out, they get filled up with the water and become beautiful lakes in the mountains. And then comes the work, work of glaciers. The work of glaciers is glacial moraines. So the materials which are carried by the glaciers, such as rocks, big and small rocks, and the sand, silt, this all gets deposited and is called as glacial moraines. So in simple words, we can say, as it is given in the this diagram, the glacial moraine is the sediment deposited by a glacier. Then comes the medial moraine. Do you know this is something important and which is not given in the books. What is medial moraine? Medial moraine is a mass of rock which carried down by the glacier at its edges. Yes. Then moving with the work of wind, which is the last work we are going to discuss in this chapter. So, an active agent of erosion and deposition in the desert is actually wind. So the first and foremost work done by the wind is mushroom rocks. Yes, you'll be surprised to know that there's a there are a lot of rocks formation which is known as mushroom rocks. In deserts, you can see such rocks in the shape of a mushroom. Now, how they get the shape of a mushroom? So what happens when the wind erodes the lower section of the rock much more than the upper part? Therefore, the such rocks have narrower base and the wider top, and that's why they are known as the mushroom rocks. Then moving with the next work that is sand dunes. Sand dunes are when the wind blows and it lifts and transports the sand from one place to another. The sand gets deposited in the low like low hill like structure. And this low hill like structures of sand is known as sand dunes. And the last one comes the loess. Loess is when the sand is deposited in large areas. Large deposits of this loess are found in the China. So this is how we finish the last topic of our class seven geography chapter three, that is our changing earth. Stay tuned for our new videos. We'll be coming up with many more videos of geography. Stay tuned. If you like our videos, like please do like, comment, and share. Let us know what you want more from us. In the comment box, I'll be personally checking all and each and every comment, and I'll be replying to you as soon as possible. So thank you. We'll be meeting with a new video in the geography. Stay tuned. Share with your friends. Thank you. Goodbye.